Two Bear Cubs, a Miwok legend from California's Yosemite Valley, retold by Robert D. San Soshi, illustrated by Daniel San Soshi. Many snows have come and gone since this story was first told by the Miwoks, whose name means people or humans. They lived in the place they called Awane, which is now known as Yosemite Valley. The Miwok believed that in the old days, the residents of Awane were animal people, creatures who were part animal and part human. Once long ago, Mother Grizzly, Oho Manite, had two cubs she loved dearly. The first had sleek brown fur just like her own. In those days, the young were not given names until they were nearly grown up. Because he had been born first, the brown cub was called Tachi, older brother. The other cub, who had cinnamon-colored fur, was Etebo, younger brother. One day, the grizzly went to the river the old people named Wakala, and which today is called Merced. She took her cubs with her to catch rainbow trout and search for berries. However, the playful cubs waded into the water and splashed each other and scared away all the fish. Their mother gently scolded them and then sent them to hunt for berries. So the cubs wandered along the river bank, pausing to sniff the air for the scent of ripe raspberries. Do not go far, Mother Grizzly had cautioned them, but the brothers forgot her warning and they raced, wrestled, played hide-and-seek, and threw stems of rattlesnake weed at one another. By the time they grew tired of this game, their fur was full of seeds. They continued further and further downriver. When they grew hungry, they ate their fill of wild raspberries they had found. At last, the cubs came to a spot where the river was slow and shallow. From a huge boulder beside the stream, they dived into the water with terrific splashes. They paddled about and ducked one another and dove for pretty stones. They washed the seeds from their fur. Wearily, at last, they scrambled up on the big flat rock and shook themselves. They lay down in the warm sunshine to dry off and nap. And as they dozed, the rock began to grow bigger and taller. For countless days and nights, it continued to grow. The whole time, the two cubs slept on peacefully and never stirred as the rock rose higher and higher. When Soyoka, the red-tailed hawk, saw them so high in the blue heavens, he thought they would surely awake when the noon sun burned them. But the rock stopped growing long before it reached the sun. While this was happening, Mother Grizzly discovered that her cubs were missing, and she began to search for them. She did not know that they were now sleeping amongst the clouds. Tirelessly, she searched through the passing seasons for her young. In her wandering, the bear met Yoel, great fox, who was chipping arrowheads from bits of shiny black obsidian. Have you seen my cubs? she asked. No, said Gray Fox, but I will help you look for them. Next they asked Tewowek, Badger, who was pounding acorns with a stone, if she had seen the cubs. No, said Badger, but I will help you seek them. After this they went to Omacha, the cedar bark home of Otea, uh, Mother Deer. Have you seen my little ones? Mother Grizzly asked the deer. No, replied Mother Deer, but I will help you find them. Soon they met Haleja, mountain lion, who was carrying a big bundle of firewood upon her back. Have you seen my cubs? asked Mother Grizzly. No, said mountain lion, but she put down her firewood and joined the others in their search. Lastly, Mother Grizzly asked Posina, little white-footed mouse, have you seen my cubs? Mouse looked up from the basket she was weaving and said, no, but I'll help you look for them. 
Then the searchers looked everywhere a cub might be, in holes, in hollow logs, in thickets, and on tree branches. They sought the cubs where the tastiest wild plums and sweetest choke cherries and plants called hummingbirds were that brimmed with nectar grew, but they found no trace of the missing two. Finally, the creatures sat together, trying to decide what they should do next. Suddenly, Red Tail Hawk swooped down. He called to the grieving mother grizzly, I have seen your cubs. They are on the granite stone, which has become a towering mountain. Filled with wonder, the cubs and her friends gathered at the base of what was now a wall of rock. They called and called, but the cubs slept on, too high to hear. Please fly up and help my children find their way down, Mother Grizzly begged Red Tail Hawk. So the hawk flew up toward the sleepers, but fierce winds blew around the stone that was now a mountain. The bird beat his wing, and he could not fight past the winds. At last he flew back down, and sadly to the grizzly, she said, I cannot reach your young ones. Then Mother Grizzly made a mighty leap up the wall, but she could no, find no purchase on this smooth stone, so she tumbled back to earth. Again and again she tried, but in the end she had to give up. Now who will save my cubs, she wondered as she wept. One by one the animals tried. Mouse tried jumping from stone to stone, but her heart grew faint when she was only a little distance up. Clever Badger scrambled a bit higher before he reached a spot where he might leap from ledge to ledge. Here his courage failed him. Then Gray Fox and Mother Deer tried. Each got a little higher than the ones who had gone before, but neither reached even the halfway point. Mountain Lion went farthest of all, climbing and leaping and climbing yet higher. On the ground below, Mother Grizzly's heart grew lighter. Surely the nimble Mountain Lion would reach the cubs and guide them safely down to her. But even the agile Mountain Lion reached a point where the rocky wall was too tall and steep. The smooth stone had no holds or outcroppings to help her climb higher, so she was forced to back down. Is there no one who can save my cubs? asked poor Mother Grizzly. I will try, a small voice said. Looking down, the grizzly saw a little measuring worm. Tutok Anna. All the animals laughed. Do you think you can do what Badger, Gray Fox, Mother Deer, and I myself have failed to do? Mountain Lion challenged. Foolish measuring worm, cried Mouse. Your name is longer than you are. But Mother Grizzly picked up the measuring worm and said gratefully, I welcome your help. So Measuring Worm began to creep up the rock, curling himself an arch, anchoring himself onto shore, four short back legs, and then stretching out his body until his six front legs would grasp another bit of stone. Curling and stretching, he inched his way up. While he climbed, he chanted, Two talk, two talk. And when he curved his body, that was two. And when he stretched out, that was talk. As he went up, he marked the safe path with a sticky thread, for measuring one can make a string like a spider. In time, he went even higher than Mountain Lion. The animals below could no longer see him or hear his little song, Too Talk, Too Talk. Up and up and up he went. Day turned to night over and over, and still he climbed. Beneath him, Mother Grizzly and the other animals kept anxious watch. Above, the cubs slept peacefully, wrapped in cloud blankets. Once Measuring Worm looked down and saw that the mighty river now only seemed like a thin band of silver, decorated with sparkling rapids and green islands. The forest and meadows of the valley floor looked no bigger than bunches of twigs and moss. At this sight, Measuring Worm grew afraid. He could not move at all, but he found his courage again, and he began to sing, Too talk, too talk, 
as loudly as he could and crept still higher up the wall. Day after day, Measuring Worm climbed until at last, early one morning, he reached the top of the vast stone. He softly whispered into the ears of the two cubs, Wake up! He was afraid that if he woke them up quickly, they might become frightened and fall off the slippery rock. When they saw how high above the river they were, the cubs began to cry. But Measuring Worm comforted them. Follow me, he said. I'll guide you safely down the mountain, for I have marked a safe path with my string. To the brown cub, Measuring Worm said, Older brother, you follow right behind me. And then to the one with cinnamon-colored fur, he said, Younger brother, follow your brother and make your every step the same as his. Do this and you will not fall. The cubs were fearful, but Measuring Worm said, Surely Mother Grizzly's children are not cowards, for she was the bravest creature in Awane. Then the two little bears puffed out their chest and said, We are brave. We will follow you. So they began the slow climb down, both cubs doing what Measuring Worm told them. After a long time, sharp-eyed Grade Fox spotted them. He told Mother Grizzly, See, your cubs are returning. Anxiously, she looked where her friend was pointing. Sure enough, there she saw her cubs making their way down the face of the mountain as Measuring Worm guided their every step and called encouragement to them. At last, the little bears and their rescuer reached the valley floor. Then how joyfully Mother Grizzly gathered her cubs to her heart and hugged them and scolded them for not minding her and then hugged them again. Loudly she praised Measuring Worm for his courage and resourcefulness. Then all the animals decided to call the rock that grew to be a mountain, Tutak Anula, which means Measuring Worm Stone, in honor of the heroic worm who had done what no other creature could do. And so the towering landmark was known for many years until newcomers named the huge granite wall El Capitan.